Well, hello again, brothers and sisters. Uh, today, I want to take us back to the very beginning of the book of Proverbs. The studies that we've been doing uh, in these recent weeks have been thematic studies. We've been uh, looking at what the book of Proverbs says in lots of different places about some um, topic or other. Uh, but remember, uh, beginning in chapter 10 of Proverbs, is where you get into uh, the part of the book that consists mostly of short one verse bumper sticker proverbs we've talked about little nuggets of wisdom bite-sized proverbs we might say and of course you know some of those are a little bit harder to chew than others but um, anyway that's just the way the rest of the book from chapter 10 on is set up it, usually don't have much more than a verse or two that have a, a connected theme. Uh, sometimes you do, but the, the point is chapters 1 through 9 tend to feature longer passages in which uh, we reflect upon important wisdom lessons. And these lessons or themes then uh, come up again throughout the later chapters of the book of Proverbs. But I want to begin by looking at chapter 1 with you. And as we do, we're going to consider four lessons or themes in this very first opening and introductory chapter of Proverbs. So let me begin by reading verses 1 through 9. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and one who understands obtain guidance, to understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. So you notice uh, one thing about this passage is that the wisdom of Proverbs addresses all people. Uh, in verse 4 it says, This is a message for the simple. In other words, people who lack understanding. Fools, you might say. Uh, if they listen to this, they can become wise. Uh, it's a, it addresses the young. So at the end of verse 4, it says uh, um, to the youth. At verse 8, you have that expression, hear my son. And by the way, uh, that expression, that address, my son, occurs over a dozen times just in the first seven chapters of Proverbs. It's a father, it's a mother, it's a wise parent speaking to a child to instruct. So this is for the simple, it's for the, for the young, but it's also for the wise and understanding. Verse 5, let the wise hear and increase in learning. And so everyone needs this wisdom, in other words, and so it's addressed to all people. It's not just addressed to one um, age, it's not addressed to just one generation, one people in one group of at one point in history it's for all people how does anyone get wisdom verse 7 says the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom you have to start there you can never be truly wise unless you know the lord uh, unless you have a saving knowledge of god well then let's read verses 10 through 19 my son if sinners entice you do not consent if they say, come with us, let us lie in wait for blood, let us ambush the innocent without reason. Like Sheol, let us swallow them alive and whole, like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all precious goods. We shall fill our houses with plunder. Throw in your lot among us. We will all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Hold, hold back your foot <coughs> from their paths. For their feet run to evil, they make haste to shed blood. For in vain is a net spread in the sight of any bird. But these men lie in wait for their own blood. They set an ambush for their own lives. Such are the ways of everyone who is greedy for unjust gain. 
it takes away the life of its possessors. So we saw that those first verses of the chapter teach that true wisdom comes through a saving knowledge of God. In other words, the fear of the Lord. In these verses, we're taught to be resolved, to make up our minds that we will not be drawn away into sin by others. Now, if you've read this before, or even if you're just hearing it today, um, some of the descriptions of the enticement uh, of the wicked might seem a little bit blatant. Uh, for instance, verse 11, uh, if they say, come with us, let us lie and wait for blood, let us uh, ambush the innocent without reason. Why is it so uh, blatantly evil? Why is it put in such a uh, um, raw way? Well, I think part of the reason is proverbial language often puts uh, the plainest, truest face on things that tend to come to us in more subtle ways. So the way it might actually happen in real life is someone approaches you and says, hey, how'd you like to make a little extra money? Some buddies of, of mine and I are doing this, and they say, um, you know, you could, you, could, uh, you could do well with us, you know, why don't you, why don't you come along, why don't you participate? And then maybe if they uh, explain to you what they're involved in, you, you start to wonder, wow, is that legal? Uh, is this really on the up and up? Is this ethical? And then they explain it to you um, uh, in a very nuanced way, and they attempt to justify their actions, uh, and, and it happens in lots of different ways. Uh, but the point is, this passage is speaking <clears throat> to the specific danger of getting caught up in doing something sinful because a group is doing it. And that danger is real. It's real for all of us, no matter how old or young we are. Uh, we call it sometimes peer pressure, especially for, for young people, kids in school. Sometimes it's referred to as the mob mentality. And uh, by the way, that brings up another reason for the language that's so blatant here in this passage. Uh, is that the unified pressure and sentiment of a group sometimes uh, emboldens people to do extreme things that they might not ordinarily do, that they might not otherwise do. You think of some of the stuff that happened in World War II amongst the Nazis and in the concentration camps and some of the atrocities. But not just that. Atrocities of all kinds tend to happen in, uh, in, 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 as a result of that mob mentality. And so that's why the language of this chapter of Proverbs isn't all that blatant after all. So the lesson is, don't get on the bandwagon if the group is doing what's not right. If the group is saying, come, let us go to the house of the Lord, great, go for it. But if the group is trying to uh, entice you to do wrong, do not listen. Don't give in to that mob pressure. And the warning, uh, even to those uh, who are involved in that, is uh, people may not perceive it, but... Sin is ultimately self-destructive. The people participating in uh, wicked activity don't realize it, but they're working for their own demise when they pursue unrighteousness. Let's look at verses 20 to 23. Wisdom cries aloud in the street. In the markets, she raises her voice. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing, and fools hate knowledge? If you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. So this teaches us that wisdom, biblical wisdom, invites sinners to repent. This is no less than a gospel invitation. And the invitation is 100% sincere. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Let's read verses 24 to the second to the last verse. This picks up right where we left off. And this is wisdom speaking to those who aren't going to listen. Wisdom speaking to those who refuse wisdom. And it says, Because I have called you, and you refuse to listen, have stretched out my hand, and no one has heeded, 
because you ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when terror strikes you, when terror strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof, therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way and have their fill of their own devices. For the simple are killed by their turning away, and the complacency of fools destroys them. So the important lesson for us in those verses is that wisdom's invitation has an undisclosed expiration date. There will come a time for every man, woman, and child when it is too late to repent. That's why it's so important that we urge people to come to Christ and why it's so dangerous for anyone to delay. That's why in Proverbs 27 and verse 1 it says, Don't boast about tomorrow, for you don't know what a day may bring. You don't know if you'll even have tomorrow, so don't put off repentance today. And then in verse 28 in chapter 1, part of the passage we just read, that should frighten us when it says, Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. That time will come for all the wicked, all those who refuse Christ and turn away from him. So wisdom's invitation has an undisclosed expiration date. You buy your milk at the grocery store and it tells you right on the, on the bottle what the expiration date is. Um, but the invitation to repent doesn't have a printed expiration. You don't know whether today will be your last day. You don't know whether you have another week or another year or ten years. And so the, uh, the invitation to repent and turn to Christ is an urgent one. And this chapter then ends with this uh, wonderful and uh, gracious assurance. Whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. And there's a sense in which that is a principle that applies to life here in this present age, but it's a promise that pertains to the life to come. Whoever listens to the Lord Jesus Christ and his gospel and obeys it will dwell eternally secure and will never dread disaster in the life which is to come. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the wisdom of the book of Proverbs. Thank you for supplying wisdom for us and for all who will receive it. And we pray that you'd give us eagerness to grow and to increase in wisdom. Give us a swiftness to repent of sin and an urgency about sharing Christ with others and calling them to repent. Bless us today. Lord, help us to walk in wisdom. Uh, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful day.